You may have heard that soil pH is really important to having an amazing lawn, but you're not quite sure why. If that's you, you clicked on the right video. Coming up, I explain what soil pH is, the issues that can stem from poor levels, and how you can go about fixing those levels. Let's get started. Now that you have your soil test results, you'll notice that the first parameter shown is soil pH. It's easily one of the most important parameters to both understand and take action on when required. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14, with 6.6 .6 to 7.3 being considered neutral. A pH value below 6.6 .6 indicates that a soil is trending more acidic, whereas values above 7.3 indicate a soil is trending more alkaline. So why is this important? It's important because soil pH greatly affects the availability of minerals and nutrients that your grass needs to thrive. Most of the essential plant nutrients come from the soil, and the ability of the turf grass to absorb those nutrients is directly tied to soil pH levels. The optimal pH range for most turf grass is between 5.8 to 7.2, with the mid sixes being the sweet spot. You can also refer to a soil pH and nutrient availability chart for a great visual reference. To save you time, I've linked one below this video. Now let's take a few minutes to talk about the negative results that can occur from soil pH being outside the ideal range. If the measured pH value starts getting much below the high fives, undesirable or even toxic levels of elements that aren't needed by the grass become available. One such example is aluminum. In high enough concentrations, aluminum will inhibit root development, which has a negative effect on overall plant health. Fewer roots means reduced capability to absorb water and the desired nutrients, both of which will make our grass more susceptible to disease and harm from adverse environmental conditions. Too much available aluminum can also react with the available phosphorus, creating aluminum phosphate. This is an insoluble compound that robs our grass of phosphorus, basically making what our plant needs unavailable for root uptake. Another important negative of low soil pH is that the ability of healthy microbes and bacteria to break down organic material and to release nutrients in a form that can be absorbed by grass is severely reduced. What this means in a nutshell is that the microbial engine that feeds the grass from both organic and synthetic sources is slowed down by acidic soil levels. A pH between 6.6 .6 to 7.3 is ideal for the microbial activities that contribute to the availability of nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus. What about the high pH levels associated with more alkaline soil? These higher pH levels also hamper the grass's ability to absorb nutrients. This is especially true for micronutrients such as manganese, zinc, boron, copper, and iron. Without iron, the grass can't create chlorophyll, which is what gives our turf that deep green color. If this iron deficiency continues for long enough, it can lead to a condition called chlorosis, which causes the grass to become yellowish in color. Definitely not what we want for a visually pleasing lawn. Now you have a basic understanding of what soil pH is and the harm that can result from it being outside the ideal range. So what do you do if your soil test results show that your pH levels to be outside this ideal range of 5.8 to 7.2? How do you go about fixing the issue? If your pH levels are on the low side, meaning your soil is acidic, you'll want to add lime to raise levels. The lime used for adjusting soil pH is commonly available in the form of a calcitic carbonate, also known as calcitic lime, or calcium magnesium carbonate, also known as dolomitic lime. Either one of these is gonna work for raising soil pH levels. Now, what's the difference between the two types of lime? Well, dolomitic lime is substituted for calcitic in situations where soil test results reveal low magnesium in addition to low pH. In most cases, calcitic lime is what you're gonna use. The product that I like for this purpose is called Magical from Jonathan Green. I prefer this product because in addition to having calcium carbonate to raise soil pH, the product also includes a bit of humic acid which helps with nutrient penetration. As a bonus, it also contains a splash of iron which helps produce a deeper green. Overall, excellent product. For pH levels that are on the high side, you'll want to blend in applications of ammonium sulfate as a nitrogen source to help lower those soil pH levels. Elemental sulfur is also commonly used for lowering soil pH because as it breaks down, it creates sulfuric acid. The product that I prefer for lowering soil pH is also from the Jonathan Green Magical line. In addition to containing ammonium sulfate and sulfuric acid, this product also contains 6% humic acid, which again, is going to improve nutrient penetration in the soil. Both Jonathan Green products cover up to 5,000 square feet and need to be watered in after application. Accompanying this video, I'll have links to both products. Now it's important to note that both of these bags look very similar. If your goal is to raise soil pH levels, you'll want to use the black bag. To lower soil pH, get the purple bag. Once you apply it, I recommend testing your soil three months later to see how the soil amendments are affecting levels. Keep in mind that depending on where you're starting, it can take a while to get your soil pH into that optimal range. The time required for the amendments to take effect is often dependent on the soil's ability to buffer against or resist change. 
This is why I recommend using regular soil testing as a tool for moving soil pH into the range where your soil is going to perform best. Eventually, you'll learn how many applications per year are required to balance your soil pH in the optimal range. With consistent work, most people are gonna be able to get into that 5.8 to 7.2 zone. This probably sounds like a lot of work, right? Well, it is, but it's also totally worth it because balancing your soil pH is gonna greatly improve the performance of any fertilizer and soil amendments that you happen to be applying. This ensures that you maximize the quality of your lawn and the value of your money. Well, there you have it. What soil pH is, the issues that stem from poor levels, and how you can go about fixing those levels. If you found this useful, be sure to like and share this video. And if you're not yet a subscriber, consider subscribing. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Until next time.